All right, so um, I made a big deal at the beginning of the semester that there would be a question on the final that required using the limit definition of derivatives. So you will need to use the limit definition of derivatives to find the derivative of something. Uh, so let's say that my function is... Uh, x over, let's see, because I want to pick one that's not on the exam, or on the practice final, so let's do 1 over x squared minus x. That seems good, okay? So we want to find uh, the derivative using the limit definition. Now, you are allowed to use the shortcuts to check your answer, but uh, you will receive no credit if you just use the shortcuts and find the derivative. Um, so don't do that. It's also very important to me that you all make A's because then I look way better than everybody else teaching this course. Uh, and uh, that's very important to me. Not even because I want a job in the future, just because I like being better than other people. Um, so recall that the limit definition involves letting h go to 0, and then it's just the difference quotient. So f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Woo, go team. All right. So first of all, remembering the limit definition of derivatives is something that you have to do. Uh, the first place that I think you'll get tripped up is remembering how to plug in x plus h into the function. So let's go over that in some detail. So this is equal to, don't drop the limit. The limit is h goes to 0. And now I'm plugging in x plus h everywhere I see x. So think of this, um, each of the x's as being in a box. And now I will replace each x in the box with whatever is inside the box, um, which in this case is x plus h. So now I'm going to do x plus h quantity squared. That squared is going to be for the entire x plus h minus x plus h. And this box is also acting as a parentheses, minus the function with just x in it. So there we go. Right. So getting that written down is the first hurdle. Um, and then the other hurdle is just keeping track of your signs and doing algebraic ma manipulation, which I know you're all capable of doing. I just worry that you might not be capable in a timed environment. So it takes a lot of cognitive skill to do things when you know that you're being timed and that the stakes are high. So I'm just rewriting what I have, and I'm putting a, a conspicuous space in the middle no reason. No, there's a huge reason. You know that. I'm not being coy. Uh, but then I'm also going to multiply this guy by uh, 1 over h. So what am I going to put in those gigantic gaps? Well, I'm going to put something so that uh, I have common denominators, right? I need to have common denominators. My common denominator is going to be x plus h quantity squared minus x plus h times x squared minus x. So this is going to be times x squared minus x over x squared minus x. It's just a dumb way of writing 1. And then x plus h squared minus x plus h probably needed a larger conspicuous gap, but whatever.
And now, um, when I go ahead and rewrite this, what is it going to look like? I'll write down my denominator. first because it's common. And the only thing I need to be sure of here is that everything has parentheses where is it where it's supposed to go. Don't expand the denominator um, essentially ever because the goal with the denominator is to get things to cancel out. So if you leave it factored then it's easier to get things to cancel. But now the numerator is a little bit trickier because we do need to multiply that out. We also need to make sure that we distribute that minus through the entire numerator. Um, two x h plus h squared and then minus x minus h. Whew like so. Alright, is everybody good here? Am I good here? Everybody with me? No one's like, where did that minus come from? Alright. Internet, everyone is looking very confident. I'm pretty sure they're lying though, Internet. All right, so now I'm going to distribute that minus sign to everything. And hopefully I won't screw anything up. So minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared plus x plus h. Whew. But then over the same denominator. All right, so now things will cancel. Um, in the numerator, this x squared will cancel, cancel with this negative x squared, and this negative x will cancel with this x. And now everything else in the numerator has an h in it. So when I'm rewriting this, I'm going to factor an h out. So I get negative 2x minus h plus 1 over that denominator again. But now the h's will cancel out. Whew. And now, finally, we can take the limit because now when I plug in 0 for h, I'm not dividing by 0. So I don't have to be Chuck Norris. I can just be Dr. Gibbons. And I'm really happy being who I am. So when I plug in 0 for h, actually, let me go ahead and indicate how I'm going to do that over here. This is going to go to 0. This is going to go to zero. This is going to go to zero. And so uh, now I've taken the limit so I can get rid of that limit sign. Negative 2x plus 1 in the numerator. And then x squared minus x times x squared minus x in the denominator. So when you are checking your work using the shortcut rules for derivatives, you'll probably see it written this way. And you may end up having to factor out a minus from the numerator to get them to look the same. Is everyone good here? OK, 
Okay, internet, exactly one person made eye contact with me.